ask him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. My mom was a storyteller. One of my favorites was about an aunt who sewed weights into her clothes so she could pass the physical for the Women's Army Air Corps in World War II. It worked. Mom also had several one-liners that she would use on us judiciously when we would ask her for advice, and even sometimes when we didn't. If you lie down with dogs, you're gonna get fleas. You can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. If you want to soar with the eagles, don't hoot with the owls. <laughs> and the one that she would use on me whenever I threw myself a pity party, I feel for you, but I can't quite reach you. I started thinking about mom's stories and sayings after I met with Pastor Paul to discuss the readings for today to help prepare my sermon. I do this every time I preach because he always has a fresh perspective and suggestions and sources that help me to focus my thoughts. We talk some about the Old Testament and how its stories, like God talking to Abraham, illuminate our faith. Mom made us think about our behaviors and choices in much the same way the Old Testament stories make us think about our faith. Pastor Paul pointed out that people from other religious traditions are often surprised upon reading the Bible stories and parables. Some are just downright weird, and some about mo more mundane daily life. They expect instead oracles or pronouncements of God. But those stories are rich with theological meaning. Exploring that idea of stories and conversations with God led me back to that conversation between God and Abraham. I was stuck on the idea of actually hearing the voice of God and falling into the trap of wanting to be told the lesson outright instead of learning it myself from the story. We know, of course, that God speaks to us directly through word and sacrament. As Lutherans, we believe that scripture is the living word of God. In the Old Testament, we have God speaking directly and indirectly. We have the words of the prophets. A favorite passage of mine is Micah 6, 8, because it partly because it reminds me of mom's straightforward teaching. What does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. We hear the audible voice of God, the Father again, in the New Testament. This is my beloved son. And in those red letter words spoken by Jesus, he gives us some directions as straightforward as Micah. Love God, love your neighbor. Jesus tells us have, how to have a conversation with God through prayer in our gospel lesson today. I preached on this text three years ago, and I have to admit, it would have been nice to just recycle that sermon. I could do that with lesson plans and activities and teaching, but I wasn't so sure that was kosher in preaching. Instead, what I saw was the foreshadowing of the good news in three different ways in our Old Testament lesson. First, we are to approach God humbly in prayer, but we are to pray boldly. Abraham is certainly humble. Let me take it upon myself to talk to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes, as he bargains with the Lord step by step and whittles that number down from 50 righteous within the city to 10. No coincidence, I think, that later, 10 righteous men will be necessary to form a synagogue. And in our gospel passage, Jesus tells us to approach the Lord humbly. Hallowed, holy is your name. And he also encourages us to pray boldly. Ask, 
and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. Just do it. Abraham's prayer-like conversation with God is nothing if not bold. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be trying to negotiate if I were talking directly with the Almighty. Even Moses argues with God, telling God he's not worthy of what's being asked of him in verse after verse. God finally takes pity on Moses and says, fine, your brother Aaron can help too. Abraham's boldness stems from his desire for justice, a second foreshadowing of the good news of Jesus Christ. Abraham knows the Lord is considering the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and takes a stand for justice, asking, shall not the judge of the earth act justly? He is speaking up for the righteous within the cities who are powerless in this dynamic. We are being taught that it is our responsibility to, to do justice, just as Jesus teaches and preaches throughout his ministry. When we stand up for justice and speak truth to power, we are following Jesus and Abraham's lead. For each of us, that might look a little different. We may help the homeless. May, we may welcome the alien or the outcast or care for God's creation. What does God call you to do? A third foreshadowing of the good news in the story about Abraham is how much God cares for the human perspective. In today's passage, God asks himself if he should hide his plans about Sodom and Gomorrah from Abraham and answers his own question. No, Abraham is my chosen leader to do righteousness and justice to lead my people. He needs to know. And so unfolds this conversation between God and Abraham. Ultimately, God became human, as we hear in the beautiful and mysterious verses at the start of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Still, I wonder, how do you and I hear God's voice? How do we have a conversation with God? And how do we respond when we hear it? There's some dialogue from an old movie that I think we can all relate to. When the lead character says, if only God would give me some sign, if he would just speak to me once, anything, one sentence, two words, if he would just cough. Since mom's not around anymore to ask for advice, I decided on the next closest thing my four sisters. They were at my house last month for our 33rd annual sisters weekend. We're no spring chickens. Our cumulative age is 344. We're all church ladies and we all love to win every game we play. Left, right, center, and Farkle are our favorites. But each of them is pretty distinct. Martha, the oldest, is kind and helpful and sweet. I know it's not right, but we tease her and call her Mother Martha Teresa. Joy, on the other hand, is feisty and funny and loud and proud. Luckily, Margaret is so calm and easygoing, she's almost zen-like. And Becky, the youngest, is the fun-loving life of the party type. But she is also a prayer warrior who inspires us all with her deep faith. On Sunday evening, we had a short Bible study on the readings for today, and then I asked them, how do you hear God's voice? The floodgates opened with their stories. Many were stories of God's presence, much like Pastor Ofstall described, in mountaintop experiences, in daily life, or in times of stress. One sister was given strength at a time of great physical danger. One felt engulfed by his presence in a time of deep despair. 
and one described a confirmation of a question in a dream. I sometimes get little nudges that aren't exactly my conscience, but that lead me in a good direction. For example, I always enjoyed visiting with the Sayers. They raised their family not too far from where I grew up. I had been trying to set up a visit with them so they could meet Pastor Judy. It was becoming difficult to work that out. One or two visits had to be canceled because of doctor visits or Joanne just didn't feel well. I started to think it might just be easier for Pastor Judy to try to go by herself, but I kept getting those nudges. I tried one more time and was able to set up a visit for a Monday morning. We had a lovely time. They were able to meet Pastor Judy and we shared Holy Communion. Joanne had a stroke the next day on Tuesday and passed away early Wednesday. I am so grateful for those nudges. By far, the most dramatic of the sister stories were very similar. Two sisters described being saved from a serious and possibly fatal traffic accident by a voice saying, stop now. One was approaching a blind corner on a windy road when she was told to stop, and she did. A huge truck rounded the corner out of control and swerved into the lane she would have been in had she not stopped. Another sister was stopped at a red light. When the light turned green, she started to go and was told to stop. She did. A huge truck barreled through its red light and narrowly missed her. Martin Luther wrote that we should not be put off by the simplicity of the Old Testament stories. The simplest stories and scriptures are often the easiest to remember, but not always the easiest to follow. So keep up your conversations with God. Pray humbly and boldly. Listen for your answers. Do justice. Love kindness. Love God. Love your neighbor. Tell your stories. And remember, if you want to soar with the eagles, don't hoot with the owls. Amen.